After a good end to the previous season, 2019 has seen further progression for young superstar Max Verstappen. As so far this season, continuously he has got the best out of his Red Bull car, if not even more. But how exactly for me this season has he been so far the best driver on the grid? Well in today's video I'm going to analyse exactly why and illustrate why for me Max Verstappen has been the best driver of 2019 so far. And also look at how he has progressed from just a year ago. So if you want to find out from me why Max Verstappen has been the best driver in 2019 so far, make sure to check out this video. So with Max Verstappen, let's first go into his first seven races of 2019 and go to the first race in Melbourne, Australia, where Max was very good in starting the season, qualifying P4, splitting the two Ferraris on the grid, and then finishing third, only just behind Lewis Hamilton at the end of that Grand Prix, and pulled off as well a brilliant overtake on Sebastian Vettel about midway through the race in Australia and brilliantly capitalised on Ferrari's reliability issues and also setup issues that weekend and Max was definitely on race day very very quick and was already showing the speed he did have in a Red Bull car that was not quite up to speed with where the team were hoping to be at that point in the season. Then in Bahrain the Red Bull car was not that good in Bahrain they could not compete with Mercedes or Ferrari at all. And Verstappen, basically, to finish in P4 in Bahrain in the race, again capitalised on other drivers or teams' issues. This time from Sebastian Vettel spinning out and then having to replace his front wing. So Max, really, in terms of the results in Bahrain, did the best he could. Couldn't do any better though because again, Ferrari and Mercedes at that type of track were just way too quick for Red Bull Racing. Then we came to Shanghai where Red Bull had a better car than they did in Bahrain, but they still were not quite there yet to compete seriously and consistently over a race for a podium finish. They were at times as quick as Ferrari, as Ferrari and that Grand Prix were. Not as quick as Mercedes, but was still quick enough for a podium. Max Verstappen, I think, did well to finish in P4. And wasn't, at times, too far off finishing in P3. But again, at the end of the day, the Red Bull car just wasn't quick enough to finish on the podium. But for me, Max did a great job in finishing P4 and being that close to Vettel at the end of the Chinese Grand Prix race. Then in Baku, basically the same race he had in Shanghai. The Red Bull car again just wasn't quick enough compared to Ferrari and Mercedes. Verstappen at times was not too far off Sebastian Vettel and at times was actually a bit close to Vettel and could have had a small opportunity at getting a podium. But again, the Red Bull car around that type of track just didn't have enough to get Verstappen onto the podium but again Max did very well to get the best out of the car to be that close anyway to the podium. Then we come to the Spanish Grand Prix and for me this was Verstappen's best performance of 2019 so far. So just like Melbourne he split the two Ferraris on the grid qualifying P4 and then at the start pulled off Two great overtakes going round the outside of Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel at the start. And then after that, he relentlessly pulled away from the two Ferraris and had easily the pace to finish on the podium. And that's exactly what he did, finishing in P3. Ended up being a bit more comfortable than it looked as though it was going to be at times. But again, that was because of Verstappen's just sheer speed. In that Red Bull car. The Red Bull was definitely better that weekend than it was previous weekends, but Verstappen still had to do the great job he did to finish on the podium. Then in Monaco, again, was right up there in about P3 in qualifying. Then in the race, of course, after the safety car came out and Max Verstappen pitted, got a penalty for an unsafe release. Nothing Verstappen could do about that. But then he was released into second place and had. Just over 60 laps 
to try and pass Lewis Hamilton and build a five second lead to win the Monaco Grand Prix. Now, even though I think Verstappen at the end of the day was disappointed in not overtaking Lewis Hamilton and building that lead to win that race, I think he still did very well to be that close to Hamilton and to give Lewis Hamilton, who for me is still the best driver in Formula One, to give Hamilton such a tough time for such a long time in the Monaco Grand Prix, that still showed that Verstappen is one of the best drivers on the grid. And for me, that day, despite not getting past and almost crashing into Hamilton at the very end, I still think Max was very good that day, very, very quick. And maybe if it was another driver ahead of him, say like Sebastian Vettel, maybe he would have got past. But Lewis Hamilton, as we know, is just too, too good. And then in Canada, again, kind of similar to Bahrain, the Red Bull compared to the top two teams, Mercedes and Ferrari, just was not quick enough. But Verstappen was really in qualifying, screwed over by his team after they tried to qualify him on the harder compound. That didn't work. And then he went out the end on the softer compound. But then there was a crash with Kevin Magnussen hitting the wall and that meant that Max Verstappen unfortunately got knocked out but then did well to come through and finish in P5 and I think if he did qualify where he probably would have I think he would have got a top four finish but it still wasn't say as good as Red Bull were hoping for at that race and it wasn't of course as good as Red Bull and Max Verstappen were in Spain and Monaco but if you look at those seven races I don't think you can doubt that considering the pace of the Red Bull car compared to the other two top teams I think Verstappen did very very well to consistently be in the top four and top five because at times it was pretty tough for Verstappen to be in that type of position and here are the key stats so far for Max Verstappen in 2019. So he's currently P4 in the Drivers' Championship of 88 points. Has two podiums in 2019. Of course, in Monaco, he did finish second on the track, but had that penalty. His best race finish is P3. He has had that at Spain and Melbourne. And his best qualifying finish was third in Monaco. And again, as I've said... Considering the pace of the Red Bull car so far this season, I think Max has done very well to finish in the type of positions he has finished in. But it's not like with Max Verstappen, we haven't seen this coming because ever since the 2018 Monaco Grand Prix, where as we all know, Max made a critical error in practice three, which led to him not competing in qualifying and finishing down in P9 when he should have been really winning that Grand Prix. Ever since then, Max has been a completely different driver and ever since the Canadian Grand Prix of 2018 he has pulled out some absolutely incredible performances considering the pace of his car and the pace of other cars and drivers at that time. For example him winning the 2018 Austrian Grand Prix and being able at the very end of that race to hold off the two Ferrari cars of Kimi Raikkonen and Sebastian Vettel and being able to manage his tyres just about to finish the Grand Prix without having any major issues. It was a great race by Verstappen. He capitalised very well at the start of that Grand Prix and fully deserved, I think, to win that Grand Prix. Then at Monza, how he, on track, finished in third place, of course, at the end of the race he finished in P5 because of a penalty. But how he, on track, finished in P3 and held off the Mercedes-powered driver of Valtteri Bottas at the most powerful power track in Formula 1 is incredible. Now, you can say Bottas was poor that day and he should have, you know, got past Verstappen, which he actually didn't during the Grand Prix. But still, for Verstappen to hang on to that position for so long, you have to commend him for what was a great race at the Italian Grand Prix at Monza, also Singapore, the following race after that, qualifying and finishing in P2. The reason this performance was so good was because not only was the Red Bull car not 
great or amazing. It was good that weekend, but it wasn't great or amazing. But Verstappen had to deal with so many reliability issues that weekend. He almost stalled under the safety car at the start of the Singapore Grand Prix because the Renault power unit was so faulty that weekend and kept cutting out. So Verstappen did very well to be able to manage those issues and still qualify and finish in P2. Russia in 2018, another great performance coming from the back of the grid, getting up to P5 after the early laps of the Grand Prix. And then eventually, after not pitting, was in the lead of the Russian Grand Prix for a very long time. Then, of course, he did pit and did, I think, the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. But to come through the pack like he did and actually lead the Grand Prix for quite a long time, considering he started near the back, is absolutely incredible. It absolutely is incredible. Also, the US Grand Prix, where again, he started near the back and almost won the Grand Prix, finished only one second behind Kimi Raikkonen. If he did start in the top five, I think Verstappen probably would have won that Grand Prix. But considering again that he started from, I think it was P15, to come from that position to finishing second and only finishing one second on track behind the race winner is again an incredible performance and shows just the talent and the sheer speed that this guy has. And then another great race for me was Brazil in 2018. Now Max of course did lose the race win because of Esteban Ocon and what he did but the way Max Verstappen after starting P5 on the grid overtook Raikkonen Vettel, Bottas and Hamilton and did it so effortlessly at the time, especially of Lewis Hamilton when he took over the lead of that Grand Prix. The way he did that was just so fantastic. And for me, that Brazilian Grand Prix of 2018, despite what happened with Ocon, that was probably his best performance of his career so far. It was for me that good. So you can see there the signs of what was to come for 2019 so far were happening in the back end of 2018. And you could argue that in the final half of 2018 that Max was the best driver on the grid. He was so, so good. Of course, the Red Bull car being as quick as it was at times on race day did help. But he still did have to, you know, complete those overtakes and had to get the speed out of the car that at times his teammate at the time, Daniel Ricciardo, did not do, even though Ricciardo, of course, had his bad luck. But for me, it's pretty simple as to why Max Verstappen has improved compared to a year ago where he was making so many mistakes in that Red Bull car. The reason he has improved is because now he has found the balance between being aggressive at the right times during a Grand Prix weekend. Because before that Monaco mistake, Max was not quite balanced enough in that area. He didn't really know how to use that aggression that he had properly. He would use it, say, at the wrong times, would use it in an unnecessary way. He still has used it at times ever since that Monaco 2018 mistake he made. But he has become a lot better in containing that area of his game. And I'll provide now a couple examples why. So for example, when it comes to the Spanish Grand Prix of 2019, where he had a great start and went right around the outside of Sebastian Vettel at turn three. Now, the reason Max did that so well was because he was able, during a very frantic start, to remain calm and to be able to just calmly position his car around the outside and make the overtake stick. But if he tried to do that before Monaco 2018, where he was still erratic, then Max would not have been so calm and he might have been a bit too aggressive and might not have even completed the overtake and might have even collided with one of the Ferrari drivers because at times it did get very close between Max Vettel and also Charles Leclerc. But I think the best example of comparing Max of 2019 to the early Max Verstappen of 2018 
is this year's Monaco Grand Prix. So, of course, right at the end of the Monaco Grand Prix, Max Verstappen tried to pass Lewis Hamilton, locked up. He did connect with Hamilton, but was able to be cautious when it mattered so he did not wipe himself and Hamilton or Hamilton out of the Grand Prix. If this was the Max Verstappen of a year ago, he would have been much more aggressive and probably would have took himself and Lewis Hamilton out of the Grand Prix. But because now he understands the balance of when to be aggressive and when not to be aggressive, when he got to the apex, even though, of course, he was trying to overtake Lewis Hamilton, he knew that it wasn't worth absolutely throwing it down the inside and possibly having a massive crash with Lewis Hamilton. And that is why, in the end, in that incident, he did become a bit cautious at the very end of that incident because he didn't want to wipe himself or Lewis Hamilton out of the Grand Prix. And I think really that is the main difference between Max Verstappen in 2019 and the early Max Verstappen of 2018 and even before the early part of 2018. Max now has learned the difference of when and when not to be aggressive. Now, of course, Max Verstappen is definitely going to make some mistakes in his Formula 1 career. That is inevitable. But I think based on the last year, it's definitely less likely than it was in the early part of 2018 because he really has come on since then and he really has matured compared to the early part of 2018. And I think if Max continues to mature and improve in terms of when he's aggressive and when he's not aggressive, if he does get the right car at a certain weekend or for an entire season, Max Verstappen is a very, very scary prospect and could absolutely take the fight to a driver like Lewis Hamilton for the World Drivers' Championship if the car, though, was good enough because right now it just isn't. But I think we can definitely say based on the last year or so that if Max Verstappen does get, for a season at least, the best car or a good enough car to consistently go for race wins, he can absolutely win the World Championship. Of course, we'd have to see how he dealt with the pressure of going for a World Championship, and it is definitely different compared to when you go for a race win or a pole position. But I definitely feel as though Max Verstappen is not far away from going for a World Championship. And if Max can continue the great form he has shown so far in 2019, then the epic battle between Hamilton and Verstappen that they had in Monaco could be, very soon, a regular occurrence. But guys, that is my opinion on why Max Verstappen, for me so far, has been the best driver of 2019. Let me know in the comments, do you agree or do you disagree? Again, let me know in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and also like this video for more content like this. And don't forget, guys, I will be live tomorrow at 1.30pm UK time for the Practice 2 watch along for the 2019 French Grand Prix. So until that Practice 2 session in France, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.